thank you so much for joining me. It's Heartbeat. And um, at exactly 8 p.m. I'm always here every Thursday to give you the best, extremely the best. Love issues, love letters, I mean, love music. What else would you ask for anyway? My name is Judy to take you through. How have you been? And how has been your day? I hope you had a blast. Well, for those who say has not been all that good, probably you looked for money and, you know, can't find it. You feel, oh God, um, should God provide you maybe another day and you kind of um, come to, you know, get what you really wanted today. Yes, keep patient. You will actually achieve all whatever you actually need. For those who are still traveling back home, hey, have a safe journey, but I wish you at least get at least half of the show because I know traffic is a little bit worse out there and um, yes run fast you will catch at least half of the show I'm here to give you amazing stuff in love show in this love show we have amazing love music um, we have love letters of which this is where you can actually write your problem you're facing a certain problem in your relationship and you feel you have no one to actually share this problem with Yes, you entrust us and you don't feel anything to share your problem with us. Probably I'll not mention both of your names, but again, you're going to benefit quite a lot because whatever advice they'll give you to be you a beneficiary and probably you're going to sustain your marriage for how you wanted it to be. And then for those who had an amazing time, I mean, you're having an amazing time in your relationship, you want to share your joy with us. Yes, tell us about your relationship and how good it's actually going on. Yes, you're a lucky person. You need to rejoice into what you have. You can also share your experience with us. You can as well call us and um, probably they are throwing um, like a surprise party for you. You have bridal shower, baby shower, engagement parties. What can I say? Things that contribute a lot for these relationships to grow. And they have not been looked at. Yes, heartbeat. It's a show that has come to actually expose all these things that help our relationships sustain. And if you give me a call, I'll be in your space. Exactly. I don't want to waste any minute or any time. Yes, this is the time I want to take you through a letter. We have a letter today and there's a young lady who is complaining about a small problem. But yes, today it's kind of best to the married. Yes, even if you're not married, you would be of good cause. Probably you're preparing yourself or you've, been, you, you, you've ever been there and um, you feel like, yes, you left it just because it was hot in there and you actually excused yourself out probably to watch others and learn quite small or few things. And now you're preparing yourself to go back to the marriage and those who are planning to actually hit marriage, it's an amazing institution. Yes, it's amazing. That's what I hear people say. But today it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of entirely centering married people. You're married and you, you either give birth or you have kids or you have a lady who is pregnant. This letter, it's really, really for you people. And it's you people that really want to give advice for them. I've always been asking me, yes, we, we posted a topic there and they were like, ah, this topic is quite discriminative. Uh, us who are not married, we are left out, yet we can give something. Yes, I'm going to explain why, but thank you so much for watching. Let's go in for this later. When I come back, we're going to drill a little bit before my guest comes in and we find what the problem could be and how best we can help this young lady. Check out the letter. I'm five months pregnant and my boyfriend, who I've been with for five years, wants to sleep in a separate bedroom. We are all in our mid-thirties and have a wonderful and loving relationship. We have great communication most of the time and we rarely have arguments. Recently, he started a new job that is incredibly demanding most of his time and his boss asked him if he can take on more work. Additionally, 
He travels a lot every month for weeks at a time. It's only supposed to be 30%, but it feels like it's going to be closer to 50%. Normally, this wouldn't bother me since I too am a workaholic. But herein lies the problem. It's taking up all of his time. He comes home from work and works until he goes to bed. Last night, he said I'm getting too big and I'm taking up too much space. So he wants his own bedroom. Additionally, he wants to continue sleeping there after the baby is born so he can get a decent sleep. He promised to offer assistance with the nighttime feeding if I am too exhausted to the nurse. How thoughtful. We got an argument about this last night and I ended up sleeping in the spare room so I could get a good night's sleep in the bedroom alone. Furthermore, last week we bought a new mattress and I offered to buy a king size bed where we can both fit. But he refused me, saying that there is no way it could fit upstairs in our bedroom, which the ingnia in me found to be nonsense. I instantly gave a solution, but he still refused. I am started to feel disconnected to him since he started this job. I don't think he's giving our family a first priority, but yet instead making himself and work a priority. Am I being overreactive? Am I making an issue out of a non-issue? I don't know if the hormones are making me oversensitive and are getting the best of me. Is there any pregnant married woman out there who sleeps in separate rooms from their husbands? How can I talk to him? Heartbeat fans in my caliber, please help me on what to do. Jovia in Impelere. You had it all. That's the letter from Jovia. You see now where I got the topic of discussion. Yes, for whoever is on our WhatsApp group, I normally post there um, a topic that we're going to talk about. Then they actually um, see it or put it on the table and they discuss a lot and see how best they can bring out the answer appropriately. And then on the show, they contribute thoroughly. But today's topic, it was kind of confusing to them. Yes, the topic was got from this very later. Yes. Jovia is crying out loud. She's five months pregnant, and she's with um, a husband whom they've been together for five years now. And where the problem comes from is the husband says she's now too big, they can't fit on bed. So for him, it's very uncomfortable. He's asking simply and humbly that let them separate bedrooms. And for her, she feels this is a time to bond with the husband. It's a time she actually wants. Yes, at times women complain. If it was a woman, we would have said yes, maybe there are hormones just because she's pregnant. But she wants to continue sleeping with her husband. And the husband is coming out to say, no, I'm just not comfortable. I can't sleep well sleeping with you. You're, you're too big now. We can't fit on bed. She proposed. She says, okay. I'll buy a bed that is bigger than that, and then better still, I'll buy a mattress so that we could still sleep together. But the man still insists that, yes, the bed cannot even fit in our bedroom. Then where will you put it? Just let me be, let me be in another room, and then uh, for anything, feeding and stuff like that, I'll be bringing you, and I'll be actually um, caring for you. If it is midnight or beyond midnight for anything that you need, I'll be coming in and out of your bedroom to feed you and help you out. But let me be, let me sleep in another bedroom just because you're becoming too big now, we can't fit on the bed. How hilarious that sounds. I mean, she's pregnant for your baby. <laughs> I don't know. This is where I normally engage married people out there. Please tell us what is like in, in your marriage. I mean, do you actually separate bedrooms when it comes to that? If you're a married woman out there, did you separate beds with your husband? Now you're sleeping in a different room just because you are too big, you can't fit on the bed. I don't know which size of the bed is it, but again, she proposed to have a bigger, bigger bed. I mean, king size, 
That's what she said. King side bed and have a mattress that fits there so that she can still um, sleep together, same room and same bed with the husband. I don't know where the husband finds the problem from, but for him he complains that she's becoming too big. And she was like, okay, let's solve the problem. Being big, let's buy another big bed so that we can actually have enough space together. And where the worry also comes in, she says that the husband is going to keep in that bedroom even if she has given back. So no coming back to this bedroom and she's worried. She takes us back to her, to his her work, I mean, workplace, that he was given another post and it has, it is so demanding, it has so many commitments and she feels like maybe he's taken up with his work and doesn't want anything to do with marriage and woman and stuff like that. But I've seen people actually balancing both of them because you're both married. I mean, yes, work cannot separate both of you. You're both married and you can as well juggle out the two, go work and then come back and then do what your woman wants. There's a time that she says it's the time that she really, really wants to be with a man. And it's unfortunate that the man is saying, you're too big, my dear. You're becoming big, we can't fit on the bed. Let me be in another room and then you'll be in another different room and better still I'll be coming to take care of you either late in the night or midnight. I'll actually come and help you, feed you, give you whatever you want, but at this moment we can share the bed. This is where we got our topic of discussion and we were saying, do you encounter, or as you a person out there, a married person, do you encounter any risks or benefits of um, sharing a bed with your pregnant spouse? If yes, you tell us why. Do you really encounter any risks or benefits? I mean, are there any benefits if you're a woman? Because women, we are like, we are left out in this topic. No, you're not. Actually, you're so much needed. Tell us. Because at times, if it is a woman who comes out and says, oh, I've hated my husband. I don't want to sleep with him. Let me just go and separate myself, be in another bedroom. But here it's a man. <laughs> it's a man. I don't know, maybe it's, it's vice, versa, vice versa because the other, the other one is pregnant. This one is not. And hormones are just diverse. Now, it's the husband feeling the hormones, not <laughs> the other one who is pregnant. Anyway, a topic of discussion, uh, do you really see are there any effects or any risks or benefits of sharing a bed with a pregnant spouse, your pregnant spouse? If you're a woman out there, what do you normally need? I mean, what exactly do you want to share a bed with your husband, probably, if you're pregnant? Because if someone says, why don't we share a bed? I mean, we can't fit. Why don't you agree and let him be? At times, even if when the baby is born, she cries a lot at night, and then men would actually be irritated, would actually want to go to another bedroom, but because he knows if he says it, you're going to become mad. They keep in there having this ego with them. I wish I was sleeping. Diff because for them, tolerance is very, very low into their minds and uh, whatever they do. They tolerate little about kids, um, crying and stuff, you know, anything that is involved with kids. So women tell us, and also men out there, please help tell us. <laughs> yes, you can reach us on our Facebook page, Record TV, Heartbeat. Our topic is already there. You can as well um, reach us on our WhatsApp number, 0758-4485-77. You can send us either a message or a WhatsApp and I'll be able to actually read all these messages live on the show. Those that come in a little bit earlier, I'll be more than glad. This weekend on Record TV.
love will save whichever problem that you have there. So keep love, keep loving. And you're going to have the best out of that love that you offer. Probably you'll receive it. It will be a reciprocal. You give in and you actually receive. Going out to everyone out there who is watching the show, let me ask Alan to actually prepare that letter again to play it. Um, I'll ask you to play it so that people that have just joined the show get to know what we are actually going to really talk about at this moment. We are going to dig deeper into the letter that I read a little bit earlier before you actually came in, in case you've just joined us. We have a letter and it's coming in from Jovia. Yes, Jovia is complaining about a certain problem. I'm not going to speak. Yes, I'm going to ask Alan to replay that letter before I introduce our guest on the show. Yes, before I introduce our guest on the show. So it's a letter that combines uh, married people out there. You might be married. You have a pregnant woman at home. You know, you know what you normally go through. There's a lot that married people go through. And at times, people swallow. And then others, probably you would lay back. And others will actually take it to be something small because a woman to carry a baby for only nine months, some short period that you be patient, then until the baby is born, and then the home becomes stable. So Jovia is complaining about a certain problem. She's actually five months pregnant, and she's complaining about his hus I mean her husband, who they've been together for five years, of whom they've been together for five years, so they've been married for five years, and she's pregnant for five months. So the guy is complaining she's becoming too big in bed. And so he's asking, uh, preferring to actually move into another bedroom and leave Jovia alone in this bedroom. <laughs> it's very absurd. And, um, and this is where we actually um, picked our topic of discussion. So let's first hear the letter for whoever who has just joined us here. I'm five months pregnant and my boyfriend, who I've been with for five years, wants to sleep in a separate bedroom. We are all in our mid-thirties and have a wonderful and loving relationship. We have great communication most of the time and we rarely have arguments. Recently, he started a new job that is incredibly demanding most of his time and his boss asked him if he can take on more work. Additionally, he travels a lot every month for weeks at a time. It's only supposed to be 30%, but it feels like it's going to be closer to 50%. Normally this wouldn't bother me since I too am a workaholic, but herein lies the problem. It's taking up all of his time. He comes home from work and works until he goes to bed. Last night, he said I'm getting too big and I am taking up too much space, so he wants his own bedroom. Additionally, he wants to continue sleeping there after the baby is born, so he can get a decent sleep. He promised to offer assistance with the nighttime feeding if I am too exhausted to the nurse. How thoughtful. We got an argument about this last night. And I ended up sleeping in the spare room so I could get a good night's sleep in the bedroom alone. Furthermore, last week we bought a new mattress and I offered to buy a king size bed where we can both fit. But he refused me saying that there is no way it could fit upstairs in our bedroom, which the engineer in me found to be nonsense. I instantly gave a solution, but he still refused. I am starting to feel disconnected to him since he started this job. I don't think he's giving our family a first priority, but yet instead making himself and work a priority. Am I being overreactive? Am I making an issue out of a non-issue? I don't know if the hormones are making me oversensitive and are getting the best of me. Is there any pregnant married woman out there who sleeps in separate rooms from their husbands? How can I talk to him? Heartbeat fans in my caliber, please help me on what to do. Jovia, 
in Impelere. At least you've had the letter. And that Jovia, she's crying out loud. So whoever out there who seems to be pregnant or you might have been pregnant some time back. How does it feel? How was it with your husband? Did your husband ask a separate bedroom to, sh I mean, not to share a bed with you just because you're becoming too big, you're carrying his baby? So she's asking, she's crying out loud to the people out there. I don't want to repeat because the letter has replayed again and I hope you've actually gotten to know the letter that we are talking about. This is where we got our topic. We are asking that, do you encounter any risks or probably benefits of sharing a bed with the pregnant spouse, with your pregnant spouse. Yes, if you encounter any risks, if you're a man out there, tell us why and tell us which risks. And um, if you're a woman out there, why do you feel um, a little bit disappointed with your husband just because he told you he wants to have another room just because you're becoming big, so probably wants to give you space and have a good night's sleep as you a woman and then for you you just want to cling on him because you want to share a bed together and for him it doesn't feel like he wants to be somewhere else but in the same in the same house so tell us and give us give us your opinion on our topic of discussion you can as well use our facebook page or probably our whatsapp number that will be displayed right on the tv screen at this moment i have an amazing guest in studio with me this is our um, a former managing director of Record FM 97.7, and nowadays he travels a lot. <laughs> also, getting him it was a tug of war, and um, he's a father of three now, three amazing kids. And as I speak right now, <laughs> the wife is pregnant with their fourth baby, so he's the right person to talk to anyway. I'm speaking about none other than a guesser, Adam King, who will come with me. This amazing visitor and studio. You're welcome to the show. Thank you. Have I done the introduction well? Yeah. Or oh, I left out something? No, 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 no. I'm a father <laughs> of three kids. Yeah. Very loving. Mm. Husband to Eve. King, my sweet wife. And we're expecting our fourth baby. Mm. She's going to be called Heather. <laughs> oh, please don't we have start. Ivory, we have Hannah, we have Howard, so we're coming up with Heather. Um, I, I can see how proud this yeah. one could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is absolutely contradicting or diverse to the husband of the person who wrote to us a letter. You had the letter. Yeah. Let's speak from there. Uh, honestly speaking, uh, Jovia's husband should be having a problem. If this is their first pregnancy, mm, she didn't indicate. Uh, it should be their first because the way uh, the gentleman is behaving, I think it's their first pregnancy. If it's the second or the third, and even uh, if the first pregnancy behaved like that mm. and is behaving the same way mm -hmm. he did in the first pregnancy. Mm -hmm then he should be having a big, big problem and he no, needs there's, a counsellor. There's somewhere Jovia told us that um, the man was given a, a big responsibility, a bigger post at work, and he travels quite, but okay, not, so, so, not so much. But he just said, I, I was a manager here. Mm. It is big. I had to make things meet. Mm. But not, even, and not even on a single day I went back home and told, if you're not today, I'm going to sleep in in the guest room or I'll sleep with my kids in their room or no I would always go back and sleep in my bed sleep with my wife in the same bed there must be a problem it's not work mm. there's someone who is coming in and, and, and yet you know you know what's so funny about it you're big you're big. Yeah, I'm and big. You have some meat. Yeah, I'm big. And I believe also he, Eve is not that small. And, 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 and now. And, and you had one bed. <laughs> and yet she was even if, And now she's pregnant. I was listening carefully. Mm. If the bed was small, you know mm. when you're starting, even when I was starting with Eve, we had a four by six. Yes. A small bed that could accommodate only two people. Of course. But now yes. we have a big bed, mm. a six by six. No, we, we're saying reality here. A six by six. And you How? fit. 
Yes, how do you start telling someone that you know the bed is, is too small? Which, which no, thing? you're becoming big. You're becoming big. How big is this, the, the pregnancy? The, 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 the five months no that way. can be a little no bit way. here. Jovia's husband uh, must be having someone else who is coming into their relationship. Mm. But I'm, I'm, I would advise him to kick that person away before it gets worse or before the situation worsens. Mm -hmm. This is your wife, you should love her. This is, it's you who impregnated her. You know, there should also be a it's bond. It's your baby. There should be that bond. Uh, she, she's actually looking for a bond, that's what I'm saying. I look at, at Eve every time she's pregnant mm. and I touch on her, 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 baby her, her stuff. You see the baby moving, you know? Mm. That is the bond. And that's why I love my kids and they love me. Because you start the, that, that bondage, you start it when she or he is still in, your, in the mother's, mother's womb. womb. That is when you start the relationship. That mm. is when you start the bonding. Yes, but until you, the baby is born. Yeah. And you know, what is so funny about it, she's actually saying that um, even when the baby is born, the husband is not yet and not ready to come back in the bedroom. That is why I'm saying there's a problem. He's that not is, comfy in that bedroom. That, I mean, that, that is that is that's why I'm saying there's a problem that is is not said somewhere. This gentleman is seeing someone else. The firstborn, my firstborn, I was still young, I should say. Mm. Yeah, I could, you know, you know, chop wires when he's crying. I'm like, ah, I need to sleep. My secondborn, I was already grown up. My thirdborn, I was the real father. Mm. And my fourth born, I even don't want to leave the country. I feel it's unfortunate. By the time she's going to come, I'll be out of this country, I know. But I would really want to be there. See her coming. Yeah? I'd really want to. Because it's really, it's a very, very exciting, you know, experience. You know, when you look at the kid, you know, changing the pampas, you know, and things like that. So I get so surprised when I hear Jovia's husband saying he would even not come back in their in bedroom, the bedroom even after giving birth mm. to their kid. Yes. No, that is wrong. The issue is when are you going to bond? Big. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, after I know when Jovia gives birth mm. to their baby, she's going to go back to her size. Mm. Then why do you have to keep yourself back there? after the size has gone back to normal. You need to come back here. But, but we, again, you know, we, we, there's this even African, the, 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 the African tradition or belief that when you don't love your woman, uh, the baby will resemble you. Resemble you. Uh, I don't have any proof Give us a break. about that. <laughs> <laughs> when the woman doesn't like you, uh, by the way, mm. on, when we were pregnant for a second born, Eve didn't like me. That is the time I was working with record. Every time she could see my car getting, you know, when I'm turning, get, now going home, she confessed, she told me this. I didn't know about this, but she told me, after giving birth, she told me, you know, I could feel like I don't want to see you, but you know, when you go away, again, I feel I love you, the, the love comes, you know, the love could come in my absentia. Maybe it happens that way, but, Listen, she said, when I gave birth, I got back to normal. Mm. And that thing happens, uh, if it's true then, the African um, uh, chemistry, the African tradition uh, belief, if it's mm. true, it, it goes for some time. It's not, it's, it's, it's not a, con a, a continuous kind of, you know, uh, uh, behavior. That when, when you're pregnant, for me, you're going to hate me that is if the baby is going to resemble me. <laughs> You're going to hate <laughs> me for two, three months. Then when the pregnancy gets into fourth or fifth month, you become normal. You will love me again like mm -hmm. it used to be. First of all, this is the truth. And this is the truth, the bitter truth. I'm a Christian. I speak truth. When your wife is pregnant, you have to meet her sexually. You have to. It helps. It helps. I, 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 I'm so disappointed you, didn't, you, didn't, you did not invite a doctor here. He would or she would prove that. Yes. That I, when, I missed out Yes, that. yes. You, you need to be with your wife. 
You know, you know, there's uh, something it said in Luganda or Kumenya or uh, things like that. Yes. You need to be with your wife. You help her. Mm. When she's giving birth, she doesn't get difficult. She, it's not difficult for her to push the baby. So you need to keep together. You need, you need to keep together. Now, how birth. are you going to meet your wife? Uh, sexually, I mean. How are you going to be with your wife? If you're running away from her, you're saying you need your bed because she's getting big. Yeah, and you're even saying you need to stay there even after she has given birth. There's something no, wrong he, somewhere. He, he says that he'll keep on coming back probably if she needs something in the bedroom, feeding and stuff. You know how women can wake up and then you need some help. So he'll actually come in, come in and out of the bedroom, but probably they'll not share a bed. Then how are, you going, how are you going to bond with your kid? How are you going to bond with your kid? The but again, bonding. also another problem, women, uh, at times they have very bad attitude when they're pregnant. Probably it's what, what is chasing a man away and he just don't want to say it out. Yeah, but Julia, I've just mm. told you. And there are those who even don't want to have anything or to hear anything concerning sex. But I've just told she you. She could hate it. And probably and a man would actually want to engage because this is his, 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 his right. And then the woman is really very agitated about it. And he feels like, okay, let me leave bed. Probably but, maybe Jovia left it out. I'm just saying. But Julie, this is something that happens in, 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 in a very, I mean, it happens in a very small, small period of time. Mm. You know, this is something that will happen for two, three months and you get back to normal. I'm a father of three and I'm expecting one to come. I've been married for 12 years. Yeah? Yes. Official marriage. 12 years, but if we count the other years also that are not official, I'm 16 years into marriage. So I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm talking about. This is something that happens for shortest time of period, mm. and it, it, it stops. It stops. There's, that call, there's something called a hormonal imbalance or something like that. I'm not a doctor. You know, I don't know. Hormonal imbalance and things like that. Oh, you know you're getting, you're getting an alien into your body, a woman. So definitely the, the moods yeah, will change. Yeah, change. Everything is going to change. You will vomit. Maybe you'll want to eat. My wife eats funny, funny things. Yesterday I saw her. We were coming from somewhere. I saw her eating what? Um, it's called a simsim. Sim. Mm. Huh? Huh? Is that and, funny? It's funny, you know. It's even good for the baby, the growing she, baby. She, then I asked her, why, why are you eating that? She told me, you know, it helps me not to spit. Oh, okay. You know? So, so such a thing, mm. can you really go mad because, or even, uh, even when she's spitting, can you go mad when you know even part of the problem? Yes. At this minute, um, I promise to come back and take you through the messages and let me begin right now. This one says, hello, Julie. It's strictly, I assume it's where me. Sometimes feels hard for a man, but the man has to adjust for love. Since they had, they had it together, they should stay in the situation together because this lady's character changed in the situation. Let her find means of seducing the man in that situation to be together in her dress code through pregnancy because it is psychological to the man, but it depends on how couples are close to each other. However, I doubt whether that man is serious <laughs> with what he's doing. That's Dev. Dev, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate. Hey, I'm Scovia or Pio or Jovia. It, it hurts so much. But what to do is to give him his time because you're not in the good condition. The only solution is to give yourself time because with your condition, you can't say or do much. Be nice to him to save your marriage. Only if he comes home every day, maybe. He's doing it because you're pregnant, because he has not been doing it other days. Um, Scovia or Pio. Scovia, thank you so much. I love your message and be it that you're a woman. Yes, you have a way you've communicated um, very well. This one says, hello dear, I'm called Hash Hashin Hashim. Your name is hard to pronounce. And I'm here looking for a sugar mommy who is aged between 30 to 45. Me, I'm 22 years of age, okay? Your message will be running on our scroll next week. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. This one says, oh my God, I can't even put myself in Jovia's shoes because for me, I can't handle such. 
When I'm pregnant, I over need my man. I want sex so much so that the guy is automatically cheating on her and giving the fake excuse. Thank you so much, dear. Thank you so much. That's how this one um, thinks, maybe. Mm, it's quite fair to keep, to keep her, him even closer. Yes, this one says it's quite fair to keep him even closer. You've, you've not left your name, unfortunately. Yes, um, I hope this one is going to be my last. This one says, hi, it's me, Ibu, uh, play for me, Powerful by Eli. Okay, we shall see what to do for you. Let me give my guest to give a conclusion. Please uh, make your conclusion to this later. Okay, Jovia, uh, one thing I would like to advise Jovia is if she has been misbehaving in a way. You know, sometimes women, when they get pregnant, uh, they also intend to be quarrelsome. Mm. Jovia, try to be as good as much as you can. Try to be good, behave well, uh, seduce this guy in a way. Hey, <laughs> dress up in that appetizing way, you know. You know, uh, try to be good, don't quarrel, you know, be calm. Mm. If he's shouting, be down. But when you shout and he shouts, you're not going to make the ends meet. Yes. I think he will sit down and revise himself and come back to you. He's your husband, you need him, and he needs you. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's so amazing. Um, send greetings to only one person since time is against us now. Uh, two people. Oh, okay. Three. <laughs> Ivory, Hannah, Howard, Daddy loves you so much. And Eve, please don't leave out That one Eve. is automatic, she knows. <laughs> Well, um, it has been so nice. Javier, you heard it all. I mean, me, what I see as a man should also be patient for Javier because what Javier does right now, it's, it's a problem. These are hormones that are pushing her to do that. So Javier, try to also keep calm. At this minute, I have nothing much to say right now, but you heard it all. Please take whatever people have told you. For the messages that I have not read, we'll be streaming in next week on our... Um, on our show. Yes, my name is Julie and my guest in studio has been Adam King. It has been nice having you part of the show. Why don't we link up again next week, same time? The show has a replay on Sunday at midnight if you can catch up the show. But for me and the entire team, we say thank you so much for watching and wish you a very good night.